So you want to be a sports better, right? You want to be profitable. There's really only two questions you need to ask yourself. Well, let's make it three or, or four. Join me while we go through these questions and help you improve your sports betting. So if you haven't been to my channel before, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so we can get our videos out there to help those sports punters and make them profitable. Let's get into this video. So the first question is, what are your unique strengths? Is it finding mispriced games? Is it reading a game on a particular sport that you know better than anyone else? Is it creating mathematical models or maybe it's about just collecting data and being able to analyze it better than anyone else. If you've got a strength, you can use it. My strength is arguing with my wife. I can win the arguments. Okay, I can't, that's true. But my strength is really collecting data, being able to analyze it, creating a mathematical model, and being able to see if that's profitable over time. You need to work out what your strength is in sports betting, and you need to take that strength and use it to your advantage. Let's think of some strengths. Are you good at programming? Well, most sports vendors aren't. There's a strength straight away. You'll be able to test things that others can't do easily. So you'll get a lot of leverage just on your skill set right there. Okay, but coding might not be your, your strength. So let's look at another thing. Are you good at watching sports? Do you love to watch sports? Could you sit there all weekend watching a sporting game? Well, maybe in-play trading is for you. If you know a particular sport and you can read the momentum in games, in-play trading is a great option where you can actually place those bets based on what you're seeing rather than what the guess is before the game. This could be a great area to get started. Another strength, maybe you're lazy. Yep, lazy. You don't want to do sports betting by yourself. You don't want to watch the games. You don't want to collect the data. You don't want to code. You don't want to do anything. You just want the profits. Well, there's an option there as well. You can go find tipping services that are actually profitable. You need to do a little bit of research up front, but once you find some that actually work, you can be as lazy as you want and just follow their tips. Outsource all that work to someone else. It's a valid option. So you can see anything can be strength. It's just how you apply it to your sports betting and thinking about it logically. So let's get on to our next question. What could that be? Okay, so you have your strength identified. Now we need to take that and turn it into real money and profits. How do we do that? We need to leverage that strength. So how do we leverage that strength? Well, we need to apply it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I can go on forever. You just keep needing to apply that strength continuously. Keep going at it. Make it the main part of your focus. If you can do that, you're going to end up making some profits. You'll also make some losses, but you'll get better. The first thing is, where can I make my profits? And that is using your strengths. So let's look at the examples that we came up with. If you can code, code every day. Spend as much time as you can coding solutions to get out profitable situations. You're not going to know unless you code. You'll be able to code to collect different data that other people don't have. You'll be able to create your own features for new models. You'll be able to learn how to do uh, machine learning on that data. If you're lazy, don't just try one tipster. Don't try two. Maybe try 10. Yeah, 10. That's one month. It, you can eliminate quite a few of those tipsters by just doing some fairly basic analysis on what their results are and whether they match up with the history that they have on their sites. You'll know who's actually lying and who's giving out real tips. And then you can go forward from there. And if you need to remove six of them, add another six the next month. Yes, there'll be a bit of cost up front. Any business and anything that is going to make long-term profits requires a little bit of upfront money or effort. So if you wanna be lazy, you're gonna to have to put a little bit of money into it. 
but you can leverage it. You could look at 100 tipsters in the first month, not really if you're being lazy, because that'd be a bit of work, but it's an option. Just keep leveraging it. Every time you remove tipsters, add new ones. Eventually, you'll have a stable of tipsters that are really good. And if they're on different sports, they'll offset each other when they have losing seasons. You can leverage it. Leverage whatever your skill is so you can increase your profits. That's the first step. So what is our next question that we need to ask ourselves as a sports better? Watch out! That's question three. What are your top risks? What's gonna cause you to lose those profits that you've made in sports betting? Where are those losses coming from? It's not always where you think. So start to think about what are the risks that are going to affect your sports betting. So first question in the risk category, where am I losing? Where are you losing? If you're losing in a particular sport, why are you betting on that sport? Can it? move on to something else, or drop your stakes in there until you can make it profitable. Is it something else? Is it when there are certain injuries in the games and you haven't taken that into account? You need to analyze a little bit on where these top risks are and are causing you to have losses in your sports betting. Maybe it's your staking. Maybe that's where your risk is. Maybe you're using a martingale system. Please avoid martingale, but Maybe that's what you do, and you need to find out where that top risk is and you have a bit of a way around staking. You need to understand that and whether or not it's profitable in the long term. It might not even be related to the betting. Maybe your top risk is about getting time just to do the form and the analysis on the game or being able to sit and watch a game if you're an in-play trader so that you can watch and focus on where the momentum is. If you have someone come in and interrupt you while you're watching a game and you're an in-play trader, you might miss that important goal or trade or getting out of position that you need to do, and that will cause problems for your long-term profit. So where is the risk in your sports betting? So you've identified your risks, What's that last question that we need to ask ourselves so that we can be profitable? So with that last example, why don't you just shut the door? We need to mitigate the risks. Mitigation is important. It's the way you turn your profits into actual long-term profits. You can have profits go up in the short term and go down in the short term. But if you can slowly mitigate your risks, remove those losses, remove the distractions, put in the work, you're going to eventually turn your losing situation into a profitable situation. So what are the mitigation strategies that we can put in place? Well, if you're an in-play trader, you know that you need to focus on the game. Have a quiet area, a particular room, and make sure that people know not to distract you while you have trades in place. This is important. That's where your profit's gonna come. Put the mitigation strategies in, that way you can have the focus. So for example, what if you are the person who decides to go with the tipsters? What mitigation strategies can you put in place? Well, first off, you could have a particular amount that you're willing to spend on one tipster, and if they lose, that is the cutoff. Or it may be that you have a mitigation strategy on how you pick tipsters so that they're more likely to be profitable. This could be reviewing uh, Twitter for reviews or different sporting sites or word of mouth. There's always a mitigation strategy you can put in that will help alleviate the risks that you have in your sports betting. And it's about removing these risks that turn in the long-term profits. I can sum up everything that we've talked about in basically one sentence. The objective is to survive long enough to see the rewards of your advantage, which you have created using your strengths and minimizing your risks, accumulate into long-term profits. 
So what are your strengths? How are you going to leverage them? What are your risks? And how are you going to mitigate them? Put it in the comments. I'll reply to all of them. I'm interested to hear what you can provide that'll help other punters as well. Everyone has great advice that can be shared. So share it in the comments. And with that, hopefully I've been able to provide a lot of value to you and you can improve your sports betting based on this advice. So I'll leave you with one final piece of advice. Keep winning and betting on yourself in life. Thanks for watching the video.